Hi guys, Samantha from Jason Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create some cool market jewellery that is really easy to produce and is really pretty at the same time. So the first thing you're going to need is a block of Primo white that has been rolled out on your thicker setting and then folded over once so that there are two layers. So my thicker setting is about 2mm thick so by folding it over I now have a 4mm thick a piece of clay. I'm just removing that here. And then also you're going to need some leaves. So I've got some sage here and you can see the back has some really nice uh, deep veins. I also have some mint and again the back has quite nice um, veins. And then I have a few other pieces that I don't exactly know the uh, type of tree but you can see that they're quite thick and will create a good impression in the uh, polymer clay. So you can see them. So just go out in your garden or wherever you get leaves and find some leaves that you think will look nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a leaf and I'm going to be using this beautiful sage leaf first because it's one of my favourites to use. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put it across like so and I'm going to press firmly on it. I'm going to roll just to make sure that I have a good impression. And I've got a little bit of leaf from my roller on there. I can just quickly shave that off. And then I just want to cut that out. And I'll put this to the side. Now we want to just make sure that it is properly embedded. And then I'm going to bring over some pastels. And I just want to show you the brand quickly. And you can get these off of AliExpress if you're looking for them. And I'm going to choose some greens, I think. So I'm just going to be popping some different greens on here. And you don't need much. And I do this while the leaf is still there. So that I don't get pastels on the area where the leaf is because I want to antique that later. Okay, and I might even add just a touch of brown. Then all I'm going to do is I'm just gently going to tap on it instead of smoothing it to start with. Okay, and then once I've tapped that will have gotten a fair amount of colour on there. Then I will smooth. And you can see that we still have those spots of colour, even though we are now smoothing. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of any excess pastel. Okay, then I want to bring over a piece of paper and I just want to burnish. Now I'm just going to clean my fingers very quickly using a wet wipe. And we're now going to cut out our pendant. And I want to keep the leaf there because that's where my pendant um, is going to be focused on. And we're just going to do completely random. slices and you want to figure out where the hanging point is going to be. I think the hanging point is going to be around here. So I'm going to just chop that. That's Okay. 
and then I'll just continue to cut away as I feel is necessary. Okay. And now I'm going to see if I can cut through the leaf here. And then I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to lift that up, keeping the leaf where it is. Flip it over. And we're going to dust the back with the same um, pastels that we used before. So just quickly scrape those on. And then I'm going to tap because I want the back to look very similar to the front. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to also brush along the sides. It'll be a very organic, very easy pendant. Now if you don't want to cut it freehand, you can always just use a cutter if you want. It's completely up to you. I'm just taking up any excess pastels that I might have and I'm just using that on the sides. And you don't have to get a perfect cover on the sides, just kind of like that. There we go. And I'll just quickly brush the back, pop that to the side, clean my fingers again, and then you'll also clean your tile. because you don't want any excess pastel in the area. Then grab this again. I want you to very carefully lift your leaf up. And I think it's probably either going to hang downwards or it's going to hang from the top. I will decide in a minute. Okay. And you'll basically repeat the same process with different colours, different shapes, with all of your other leaves. So I'm going to make a few more pendants and I'll show you how they look when I'm done. And just another thing that I just want to quickly demonstrate is if you do decide that maybe you don't like a certain aspect of this, like I think maybe I want it to be a little thinner over here. Like that. Then you can just go and take the same pastels and brush it over that surface again. Okay, so I've done a few pendants and in different colours as well. So here's a brown one. Here's a beautiful blue and purple one. This is a red and orange one. And here's the one that we did. Now I just want to show you quickly. And let me just bring this forward so you can see these a bit better. There we are. Now I just want to show you how to get this colour gradient because with this one it's kind of all speckled all over the place with these ones I did a colour gradient so I want to show you how to do that. So I've got another piece of clay here and I'm going to grab my leaf that I ch have chosen. Let's see. I think I'm going to go this one again. And I'm going to lay it down on the clay. And I'm just going to separate these leaves as best I can. There we go. I'm going to grab my clay. Oh, paper, sorry. And I'm just going to burnish until that is set in the clay flat. Just make sure you do a real good job of burnishing this one. This is a rather thick piece of leaf. And now I think the colour that I'm going to go with this one is green again. So 
So I'm going to bring out my greens from lightest to darkest. like so. Then I'm going to start. And actually before I do this I want to cut this out. You don't necessarily have to um, wait until after you've done the pastels to cut this out. So it's completely up to you. If you find it easier to do the pastels first then by all means go with that. But you can also just chop this out. And I kind of like to follow the direction of the leaf. And you can see here that I am uh, curving my blade as well, whereas the other one I decided to go sharp. So it's completely up to you how you cut these pendants out. Each one is going to be completely different from the other. Now I'm going to start with the light at the bottom, I think. Then I'm going to go to the next colour. And so on through my colours from dark to light or light to dark, depending on how you want it. Okay. Then grab your finger, tap, start from one side and go up. Okay, and then when you're done, brush towards the sides because there was quite a bit of pastel on there and I'm just going to quickly rub off my finger so that it is not covered in pastels again and then burnish and press fairly hard because you want to get into that leaf um, into the close areas and you want to burnish that pastel flat and there is your colour gradient Then I'll just quickly pick this up. I'll just grab these little bits of pastel that are along the side. Just use those to clean up our side. And then I'm going to flip to the back. And I'll grab our pastels again. And you can do it in a gradient if you want, completely up to you. And I'm going to do a slanted gradient here, I think. It's a really easy, fun technique that really has no wrong or right. It's completely up to you. You could do it with your kids or grandkids if you wanted to. Uh, they make great gifts. They're very easy to make, very forgiving. So it's a, it's a great beginner's project if you're just starting a polymer clay. You just need the white polymer clay, white Primo or Kato or any brand really, apart from Sculpey 3, it's too brittle. Um, but generally any brand will work for this. Just use white that generally is the best colour to use and make as many as you want okay. and then when you're done we're going to gently see if we can get this out without having to use our blade there we are very carefully we're going to lift that out and then just lay down any areas that might have lifted up And there we are. Those are all the pendants that I'm going to make. So let me just twist this around so you can see it. And you'll see the others too. And there we are. You can see how they look. And I'm going to pop these all in the oven at Primo's recommended temperature for a full hour. So that they bake. Um, and then we will antique them, finish them and string them. And now just before I bake them I just want to say that if you don't have a pin drill I'm going to show you a quick way to create holes but if you do have a pin drill you can, bake, you can drill them after baking. 
If you don't have a pin drill though, you can always just use some micro cutters to just quickly cut out a hole in your piece, like so. And that is where you would string from. And then I'll just use a skewer to get that clay out. And that is how I'm going to do these, because it's much easier than drilling. And it creates quite an effective hole for stringing. But if you didn't want that, you could always drill them after you have baked them. It is completely up to you. But for those of you who don't have a pin drill, you can always just use a cutter to do this. I wouldn't recommend using a piercing pin though, because piercing pins will um, distort the clay, whereas a cutter like this won't. It will just cut out the clay, but it will leave your shape in the same shape as it is without distorting it. There we are. Easy peasy, now they all have holes for drilling. And now I will go pop them in the oven for a full hour to bake. Okay, and so here are our pendants now that they are out of the oven. Let me just turn up. There we are. And you can see that there's basically no colour change in them whatsoever. And the pastel will still come away a little bit on your finger but we'll fix that up later. So what we want to do now is I want you to get some paint. So I'm going to be using this one for that and I'm going to be using some black paint for this and you can use any paint colour you want completely up to you. I might play around with some other colours um, with the other pendants but for this one I want to use black. I'm just going to pop a bit onto the tile i okay, dab my brush in it and I'm going to aim mainly for where the leaf is. It doesn't matter if you go outside of the leaf's pattern, but just take your paint and dab it along those veins and make sure that you get it in there. Like so. Mustn't be any white spots left. And this end as well. Okay, then I'm going to get a wet wipe and I'm going to start by removing that. And you might need to do it a few times because you can see that I've removed too much over there. And it will remove a little bit of the pastel but it's not going to remove too much. And then I'll just clean up around the area where I took off too much. And I'll clean up around the other areas and I'll go back there in a minute. But essentially I just want to remove this excess paint. And I'll go back in with my brush, just a little bit. And I'll dab the areas where I think I need some more paint. I think I could do some more here too. And I'll probably just wait for it to dry completely before I brush it. So I'll give it another try this time. And I'm going to let that dry completely. And then I'll wipe it off with my um, wet wipe. And if it's giving you a lot of trouble, you can try wiping it lightly with a wet wipe and then going in with a tissue, which is dry. Because the dry, yeah, the thing is, the less paint you're going to remove. So the best thing to do, though, is to wait for this to dry. And I'm going to do that with most of these. I might play around with some different colours, but I think I'm probably going to stick with black. Okay, and our antiquing is finished. And here's how they look. And you can see why I love the sage leaves. They're my absolute favourite. They have such detail in them. And that's great because you can get them from the shop as herbs. So now what I want to do is I want to do a little trick. Hopefully you can see here from the rubbing 
that around the edges we've actually rubbed away some of the pastel so that it creates a white spot. We're going to encourage that and so all we're going to do is we're going to take our wet wipe and you can achieve this by just taking this and rubbing but if you add a little bit of 99% alcohol or just alcohol in general it will go much quicker. And I like to rub around the edges as well to create a lighter spot just to highlight it and if it's really giving you a lot of trouble you can also try using sandpaper but this is an added extra thing you don't even have to do it if you don't feel like it but I just thought that it just kind of adds the extra bit of dimension to your piece so there we are take this one I want to clean the edges a bit so I'll just rub this along here going along the line and you can see there it is getting rid of a fair amount of that pastel and then I'll just dry that off and you can see that it's just kind of created a little bit of a outline and you can do this if you want but again as I said it's not completely necessary but I do think it adds an extra effect like I'm going around these leaves here I'm lightening up the area around them and it just highlights it, it just adds that extra little bit and then I always like to go in with a little tissue and I'll just dry that off and I might need to clean it again because some of the paint came off but there we are, it just adds that little bit making it look more interesting so I'll do that with a few of the pieces until I am happy with them. Okay, and here they are. Now the final step, and keep in mind all of these steps are just to add a little bit extra. Final step is just I want to go around the edge because some of these I'm not quite happy with how it um with how the uh, pastel came off, and I just want to sand a bit around these edges just to get some of that pastel off again just to create that border and this is again up to you but I just love the kind of rough frame that it gives it and it's so easy I'm just using a 400 grit piece of sanding paper All that's doing is it's just rubbing away that top layer of pastels around the edge. And now, as far as sealing these go, we do need a little bit of a sealer. Though we have wiped away the pastel, so um, you don't have to worry too much about sealing it. But I do think that it is best to seal it. You can use any sealer you want. You can use resin. You can use Varathane, you can use a matte sealer if you want it. I'm going to be using some Renaissance wax just to give it a light buff. And I also might just go in with my sandpaper and just sand that leaf if I can. And all that's going to be doing is it's just going to be making the white whiten it and make it stand out a bit more. Now what I'll also do is if I'm not careful, it will also just create a little bit more of a border around it. So I might do that with all of them. Just take my sandpaper and just give it a quick rub around that leaf area. And these ones I won't do that too much, but it will increase that border around them as you can see and all these just tiny little touches just takes it from a fairly plain pendant to something that looks really nice Okay, there we are now I've got some renaissance wax and I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to take a tiny amount so you don't want too much 
and I'll use this one as an example and you want to be careful because you don't want getting wet getting wax in all of those little crevices um, like clumps of wax you don't want that you want just a nice fine layer of wax and make sure you apply that to the back as well and then we're gonna buff it Just bring over my buffing wheel and I'm going to buff. And it's just going to add a little bit of a sheen to it, as you can see. I'm trying to catch that in the light. There we are. So it's just going to add a tiny bit of a sheen to it. And I'm going to do that with these as well. Okay, so all our pendants are done. And so now I want to do a stringing technique with these. So what we're going to do with this one is I've got a piece of black suede and I'm going to take these cord ends and I'm just going to squish that so that it can't come off and that one cracked might need a smaller one there we go. let's see if we can get them in there I can see it going through. So you want one that fits the tightest. There we go. Then squeeze that nice and tight. Check that it won't come out. Grab a jump ring. And pop your clasp on. And I'll repeat on the other end. Okay, and then when you've done when you have done that, just take that, find the middle place in your cord. And I have a spacer, and I'm just gonna string the spacer on. And then I'll string on my bead pendant. Do a little fold over knot. Bring this down. Sure it's nice and tight, and then bring this down sit above it. And here is how the pendant looks. So that is the one way you could do it. And then you have other ones where the hole is a little small to do that. And so the way that we're going to do that is you can either take a pinch bale and just pinch that bale so that it sits like that. And let me just show you so it will basically sit like that on your piece but personally what I prefer with these ones anyway is to take this really cute leaf themed bale and you're also going to need a jump ring and I'll just open up that jump ring pop that through link that to my leaf bale and I'll have to see if my cord can fit this, otherwise I'll have to find another smaller bale. Larger bale, excuse me. And I want to use rubber cord and this won't fit. So I'll find a bale with a larger hole. Let me have a look here quickly. This one will work. And a lot of these findings you can find on AliExpress, eBay, Fire Mountain Gems, places like that. Okay. There's your bale. And now I have some rubber cord and I've got one end done already. 
And I'm just going to string the rubber cord through. And on the other end, I'm going to grab one of these. And now the rubber cord fits really nice and tight. So I might need to pull it through. There we go. I like to pull it through a bit. And then I'll use my pliers quickly to just snap off that tapered end. Bring it back down again. And then I'll squish that post. Give it a little pull, check that's tight. And I'll grab my other end of the clasp with the jump ring and close that up. Nice and easy. And here is how our little pendant looks. So I've done that with all of our pendants, so let me just bring them over. This is this one. Um, and then here's another one like it where I used the leaf pendant and I used a different cord. So let me just bounce out, there we go. And here's the one where we use that nice fold over effect. I'm just going to zoom this out for you so you can see. And then here's this one, I've got this nice little purple suede cord. And finally I've got this red one and I used a little bit of a green cord which I think looks quite nice with it. So that's basically it and in total um, this probably took me about oh I'd say roughly about an hour to do but the thing is if you were doing more pendants it would take you like only a few seconds per pendant extra so if you were making a whole bunch of them you could get about 20 done in an hour not including baking time and that's really nice for markets because I know that at markets you guys can have some trouble selling your stuff and you need to mark the prices down fairly low about 10 to 20 dollars per piece these ones you could sell for 10 dollars and you could make a good profit off of them they didn't take a lot of time to make they're really easy to make each one is unique and different you can have a lot of fun playing around with them you can replace pastels with mica powder you can replace the pastels with alcohol ink gilders paste lots of things uh, you could replace the antiqued paint with maybe some alcohol ink or gilders paste. Uh, you could even highlight it when it's raw still with some mica powder as well. There's lots of things that you can do so you can play around with these and have a lot of fun. And they should be quite popular at the markets because they're really pretty and a nice gift to give to people. So I do hope that, that tutorial was helpful to you and that it has inspired you and I look forward to seeing what you guys make with it. Um, if you would like to show me pictures, I do have a group on Facebook under the name of Jessima Tutorials Community. I'll leave a link to that in the description below the video if you want to go have a look there. Uh, we've got lots of people sharing photos of the things they have made over there, so if you would like to join, please do. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.